What's up everybody and today we're reacting to this is America's C-RAM weapon system. This is by US Military News. Uh, I don't know whether this will come out before or after the, the other one today because I've got two videos coming out by US Military News today. Um, check them both out. Go to the description. Go and subscribe. The videos are fantastic and uh yeah they're really worth the watch they really are and i'm enjoying watching these with you guys so we're gonna be checking out this uh giant weapon and we're gonna see what it's capable of uh if you haven't already don't forget to like comment subscribe please subscribe 90 percent of people who watch these videos are not subscribed and it will help with that mysterious youtube algorithm check out dreadnought meteor the projects the side projects me and my brother are working on in the description and other than that let's shut up let's pull this up and let's have a cheeky peek big gun c ram an advanced automated point defense Gatling gun. Ooh! What is this big barrel? I want to know what this big barrel on top is. Burr. Burr. That's all it's doing. Burr. That's Indirect crazy. Indirect fire from mortars, <laughs> missiles, and artillery shells is a very serious concern for armed forces in a battle. Mm. But thanks to point defense systems like the C-RAM, indirect fire of this nature may have met its match. Woo! The C-RAM, standing for Counter Rocket Artillery and Mortar, is a land-based phalanx weapon system with the capability of integration with other protection sensors and systems. So it's land-based. My presumption we haven't got any of these on the Navy, in the ships, have we? The system is designed and manufactured by the American company Raytheon. I swear, these companies, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, the amount of money they get from the U.S. military taxpayer, U.S. taxpayers through the military is crazy. Crazy numbers. Phalanx is a rapid-fire, computer-controlled radar and 20-millimeter gun system that automatically acquires, tracks, and destroys enemy threats that have penetrated all other ship defense systems. Woo. The Phalanx was designed in the... Oh, it is on a ship! It is on a ship. Look at that. Beginning as a ship-based anti-missile system. Holy. Someone's getting rounds fired at him about 10 miles away. Like, what's going on? <laughs> the Centurion Weapon System mission represents Whoa. a revolutionary approach to countering insurgent activities by intercepting rockets, artillery, and mortar rounds in the air before impact thereby reducing or eliminating any damage they might cause. The C-RAM's naval equivalent, the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, SeaWiz, was first developed as an automated weapons defense system in 1973 Ooh. and incorporated a 20... 1973? ...millimeter M61 Vulcan Gatling gun autocannon used since 1959. Used since 1959? Oh my god! The adaptability of that thing's unreal. The Navy Phalanx system was first appraised as a possible ground-based variant in 2004. Okay. Phalanx was selected partly because it could be readily interfaced with a multitude of sensors and systems designed. To Whoa, that was that was kind of weird how it like tracked that plane for a second, and then it's almost as if it was doing it on its own. Mate, as soon as AI uprises and takes over this world, then things are going to be pointing at us. Oh, we're taking a shit in the morning. We're going to wake up, open the curtains, and it's going to go, Zzz! and look at you. <laughs> to provide an overarching protection umbrella of sights on the ground. Holy! The amount of rounds. <laughs> in its land-based configuration, the land-based phalanx weapon system, LPWS, is... Got a, it, at the end of the day, all they've done is they put it on a truck and give it a nice cheeky paint job. System is mounted on a wheeled platform in order to provide enhanced stability on site yeah. and mobility for repositioning and deployment. Yeah. The Centurion C Ram can, for example, be mounted on a trailer or the rear side of the Oshkosh truck. Should have put one of them on top of me, bus, my schooler. If anyone doesn't know, I traveled around the US for two years in a school bus with my family. Should have put one of these on top. That would have been sick, wouldn't it? <laughs> In October 2008, Raytheon and Oshkosh unveiled the Mobile Centurion, which mounts the system on a hybrid electric heavy expanded mobility tactical truck. The first battle-ready C-RAM system was deployed to Iraq in 2010 in order to protect the Green Zone, oh an area in Baghdad God. used as an American embassy. 
Trials of this system showed that it was capable of knocking out 70 to 80 percent of rockets and mortar shells fired within its area of control. The wow. CRAM system has successfully intercepted hundreds of rockets and mortar shells fired at the green zone, thereby proving the system's capability as a defensive system. Holy. Oh my like its NATO god. The CRAM utilizes advanced search and track KU band radar systems that feature closed loop spotting technology. Is that what that big dome is? The radar system? To automatically acquire and track targets and engage them. KU band, in case you're not aware, is a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum in the microwave range of frequencies between 12 and 18 gigahertz. <sighs> no idea what he just said then. It could have been speaking in a completely different language. And have been like, yeah, sure, mate. I'll just agree to whatever you just said. <laughs> you have to remember, I was boots on the ground. I was a Royal Marines commando, all right? I'm not an expert in this stuff. I just watched stuff go, go burr. <laughs> I did shoot a minigun, though. We had a minigun off the side of the ships when I was doing anti-piracy. Then things were unreal. You shoot traces out of them and they hit the water. And they skip off the water and go up in the air. It looks incredible. Similar systems were installed on the space shuttle to help Whoa. identify and track other spacecraft. The system can also be integrated with an array of other sensors and systems to help provide an overarching protective umbrella to protect a given location on the ground. Okay. The weapon's primary armament is the 20 millimeter Vulcan Gatling gun. It consists of six optimized barrels augmented with forward looking infrared sensors. The barrels are secured together at the muzzle, mid-barrel, and breech to provide enhanced accuracy and enable fire to constrain shot dispersion patterns. I do not doubt its accuracy for a minute. The M61 is a hydraulically, electrically, and pneumatically driven, air-cooled, electrically fired Gatling gun rotary cannon that's been used in one form or another on various fixed-wing military aircraft, tanks, and ships for over five decades. So, air cool. These barrels have got to heat up quick, haven't they? My presumption is they heat up quick, these barrels, and they can't be bursting for too long. It was originally produced by General Electric. The U.S. Army also uses the M61 in the M167 and M163 air defense systems Woo! as the primary gun system on the F-15, F-16, and F-18 fighters of the United States Air Force. Okay. The gun is also used as the tail gun on the B-52H bomber, while a lightweight variant is used on the F-22 Raptor fighter. Wow. But all that firepower is also half the story. If you can't track and accurately put the cannon rounds in the right place at the right time, you basically have a fancy piece of pyrotechnics. Yeah. This the fact that they're, they're mounted onto fighter jets is absolutely insane, isn't it? This is achieved through the combination of advanced sensors that enable the CRAM to simultaneously search, track, engage incoming targets, Whoa. and prioritize targets and make kill assessments in both daytime and nighttime. CRAM's KU band radar system enables the weapon system to detect potential threats early in their flight and then pass on their trajectory and vector data to the system's tracking algorithms only when it judges them to be a real and present danger. Okay, okay. Target tracking and engagement is further enhanced by a sophisticated thermal imaging system. So it does have the ability to differentiate between friendlies and non friendlies to help improve targeting. Thank the God. system <laughs> operates in the 8 to 12 micron wavelength range and is mounted on a stabilizing pedestal attached to the weapon's main antenna radome. Mm. It provides very reliable night and day passive search and tracking while also... God, imagine just flying your plane and then just seeing that thing just... <laughs> You'd be like, oh no. <laughs> Time to call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> improving the overall anti-air warfare performance of the system in multi-path environments. These are terrifying. Other <laughs> systems integrated into the Centurion CRAM system include Northrop Grumman's ANTPQ-36 short-range firefinder radar and the lightweight counter-mortar radar to detect and track fired rounds. This hardware is controlled by fire control subsystems like Northrop Grumman Mission Systems Forward Area Air Defense Command and Control System, which ties to just press the button these things are legit a nightmare aren't they they're terrifying i'm gonna have nightmares about i'm gonna have nightmares i wake up 
and I look at the end of my bed and it just that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna have nightmares of that. It's me for the next week. <laughs> Together the sensors and weapons of the army's short range air defense battalions. Oh my god. <laughs> That sound is terrifying. <laughs> oh my god. That long head. As it's, got, you might it's got a massive head on it. It's like a Simpsons head in it. It's like Homer Simpson. <laughs> Spec such a sophisticated piece of kit does not come cheap. Each How much? RAM system costs somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 million dollars, depending on the final. Holy! 10 to 15 million dollars. Holy shit. That's absolutely insane. Imagine what you could use 10 to 15 million dollars. One of them guns. Imagine what you could use that money on. Oh, I'd go to the store and buy all the kombucha. I'd buy all the food. Oh, I'd buy all the Warhammer. I'd get all the new old world Warhammer. I'd buy it all. What else would I buy? I'd buy a farm in the middle of nowhere. I would. That'd be sick. Or I'd just buy one of these. I'd just get one of these with that money. <laughs> Put it on me, boss. Spec of the units purchased. But that's only the cost to initially acquire the technology. With such a massive rate of fire, this unit literally burns through bullets. Depending yeah. on the number of munitions spent, a typical engagement with a single missile could range between thirty to sixty thousand dollars. Some other estimates put the figure at around forty thousand dollars per missile. Wow. This is not only costly from a material point of view, but is also one of the main disadvantages of the system. By spending so much on ammo on a single threat, a limited ammunition supply will theoretically limit the number of threats that the unit can engage at a given time. Yeah, that makes sense. By some estimates, this might mean that the Centurion C-RAM might have a maximum anti-RAM cap of about five incoming rounds before needing to be reloaded. So that is a bit of a struggle, isn't it? Um... They, they, they do have a limit to them at the end of the day. It makes me wonder if this is a relatively old bit of kit, what they're doing now to, to combat that problem. The system has some other perceived weaknesses too. For example, it takes about five seconds to acquire, lock onto, and engage a threat. Five it seconds is a long a time. It also has a short effective range of between 100 and 1,000 meters. Five, that's a long time. That's a long time. These weaknesses aside, it's shown itself to be one of the most effective anti-missile, mortar, and artillery defense systems in the world. For this reason, it'll likely remain an important player for many armed forces around the world yeah. for many years to come. Oh my god. Isn't that absolutely nuts? That's crazy. Where are them rounds going? They're going somewhere. If they don't hit the target, they're still moving. Where are they going? <laughs> Where are they sending them? I think this is just footage at the end. Great video. Great video. Really enjoyed it. Learning more about this type of equipment. We've done a lot about aircraft and the Navy and all this different stuff. It'll be interesting to start doing some stuff on actual... Um, you know, weapons. I think I want to do this and personnel weapons as well. I think it'd be really cool. There'll be a link down below to the original video. Check it out. Their channel, uh, the US Military News Channel, absolutely fantastic. Go subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel because it helps with that mysterious YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe. 90% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. It's over 90%. I'm generalizing it. It's over 90% of people are not subscribed. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.